Space agencies of different countries view the moon in the future as a transit point for flights to other planets. Such theoretical projects exist already. Gravity on the moon is six times weaker than the Earth's, and therefore, it would be much cheaper to launch a rocket to Mars from there, since less fuel will be needed. But to do this, we will need to build a launch pad on the moon, and hence the base for the employees of the lunar space port with everything necessary to sustain life. Such a manned base could also be used for commercial purposes. Space tourists from Earth could stay there. Perhaps one day it will be possible to buy a ticket to the moon, just like now we can buy a ticket to some exotic islands. In any case, enterprising Americans are already looking for volunteers to visit Earth's natural satellite. However, how realistic is it to make the moon suitable for life? It is one thing to walk on its surface, but staying there for a couple of days is totally different. Although a person can live on the International Space Station for a year or more, on a moon station, the crew would need to be changed once a month. Otherwise, they would have to be treated for radiation sickness. Calculations show that an astronaut, after 100 hours on the moon, will receive a dose of radiation that is dangerous to health. And in case of a solar flare, this could happen in a matter of minutes. Therefore, experts say that it's preferable to live under its surface, not above. The moon's surface is made of very durable material from basalt. Basalt is so strong that you make tunnels inside it. You won't need any structural reinforcing to support them. Simply put, you dig a tunnel and live in it. Moreover, under the surface of the moon, we can use basalt to extract oxygen, which is so vital for human life. The basalt consists of silicon dioxide and metal oxides in almost equal proportions. And therefore, if we squeeze oxygen out of the basalt, then along the way, we'll also get iron, titanium, manganese, and magnesium. So it's an entire array of different metals that will be available to us. On Earth, one of the main requirements for life is water. And today, we know that the moon has it. Launched in 1994, an American spacecraft named Clementine had a neutron sensor, which showed some anomalies that could indicate the presence of water. After that, the U.S. launched Lunar Prospector. This was a scientific satellite, which confirmed, indeed, the presence of water. Scientists claim that water is contained at the bottom of the lunar craters in the form of ice stocks, but nobody knows how much water they contain. Despite all our modern technology, mankind is not yet ready for the full-scale colonization of the lunar surface. Much remains to be understood and calculated, and the pros and cons still need to be weighed. Therefore, experts believe that the current moon race will not be as intense as the first one, because today there is no fierce rivalry and the pioneers long ago accomplished their goals.